so it finally came the CYC X1 Stealth. Looks like this is the display. Here we have the thumb throttle, some spacers. This is the front sprocket, the chain. And then here we have the star of the show. Ooh, look at this. I have to say guys, the price tag on this is pretty high, but the quality, I mean, this thing is heavy, solid metal, and it's nice. And of course, I got the model with the ASI 855 controller. And I have to say, in comparison to my old controller, which is huge, this one is super compact. You can see how it's integrated with the motor, which is very nice. Here is the new torque sensing bottom bracket with the cranks. And to go with the new crank arms, I picked up some new Rock Bros pedals. And I think these would be a nice addition. Okay, I got the bottom bracket all set up, the spacers, which because I have a 68 mil, I'm gonna use all the spacers. So let's try this. Oh, it already looks good. Slide in the spacer. Ah. Okay, be very cognizant of the, the threading. Do not want to mess this up. So this goes uh, anti-clockwise to tighten. All right, looking good. That's hand tightened for now. And we gotta put the spindling through. And it should be pretty painless. This whole thing so far has been pretty painless. Boom, okay. So far so good. Okay, chain ring time. Whoo, that is pretty. It looks like I missed a crucial step. I was supposed to put the chain, oops. Okay, that wasn't supposed to happen. But apparently at this point, you're supposed to put the chain that goes between the motor and the primary chain ring on now, and then you insert it. So let's do that. Man, they really do not give you much slack to work with. The key was to lay down on your side. Apparently that made all the difference. One, now the other. And here are the high quality Rock Bros pedals that I picked up separately, but I think they're a fantastic addition. And again, be mindful of the threading on these. Okay, now the last thing you have to do, aside from the wiring, which is going to be very easy, is the little holder that's gonna keep the motor in this position. And like that, the physical insulation is done. Now on to the wiring. Okay, so this is what we have in terms of wiring. We have the main display with the little mode switcher as well as the on off button. We have an extension slash splitter cable. And we have the thumb throttle in my case and a magnetic, I think it's a speed sensor. It goes on the back wheel. And by the way, all of these have waterproof connectors. In fact, this whole system is water resistant. Okay, they actually give you a full wiring diagram and it's super simple. Okay, a bit of a tough angle, but the torque sensor is plugged in and I have the wire kind of tucked away. Okay, and then this one right here is the speed sensor that's gonna be mounted somewhere over here. I'm gonna do that last. And that just leaves this big cable right here. So let's plug that right in. It's a very tight fit because these are waterproof connectors. I gotta route this up to the handlebars. All right, so now I just have to mount the display and find the throttle because I already lost it. Feels smooth, this thumb throttle. Looks a little bit weird, but seems to be functional. And that is always satisfying. Okay, it's all fastened down. I actually had to remove my mirror because I simply ran out of room. And all that's left now is to plug it in. And they're actually color-coded. So you can see right there, it's green and yellow. 
Okay, let's take the CYC motor out for its first inaugural test spin before it rains. It is getting quite cloudy and windy. Now, since we last spoke, I was just adjusting a bunch of small stuff on the bike, and I did notice that the motor and the cog aren't perfectly aligned, and that is the right cog wheel. It's supposed to be on the outside. I'm not sure if you guys can tell on GoPro, but it's slanted. And I tried my best to adjust, and it's still not perfectly aligned. So I'm going to email the company, see what's up with that, to maybe try messing around with it a little bit more. Um, but the chain hasn't fallen off. It just kind of makes a noise, and it's under a little bit of tension that it doesn't need to be under. But let's do this. I did go into the settings and unlock it. Because by default it comes in uh, like street mode or something like that. So, okay. Pedal assist. It's working. Gonna go throttle. Okay, definitely some good pickup. I'm in uh, three out of five right now. My battery is at 78 volts. That's something I like about this display. It tells you the volts right there, not just a stupid battery indicator. Okay. I think you guys can hear that noise. I mean, it's very windy out, so maybe not. But that's just the chain, because like I said, it's not perfectly aligned. The motor itself does make noise, but CYC did tell me that the new batch is a lot quieter and less high pitched than the old ones. And I have to say, I think I agree with them. The noise isn't bad at all. I just have to eliminate that chain noise and fix that alignment. Okay, I mean, the acceleration is very slow, so maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Let's go up to mode five. That's better. Whoa, okay, yeah. I feel that power now. Not bad. Let's do some pedaling. I definitely have to fine-tune this. The uh, There's an app that comes with this motor. Okay. Oh yeah, I have gears now. Let's use that. Let's go a bit easier. But yeah, there's an app that comes with this motor. And it is very intimidating. But you can adjust basically all of the settings. There we go, that's a good pickup. Okay, yeah, we're at 1600 watts. I think you guys can see that on the screen. It's not giving me a readout of speed, unfortunately. Nice, it's definitely very peppy. Damn. Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, see this motor, it's advertised as 1500 watts, but it's actually a peak of 2000. And of course, I have a match with a 72 volt battery, so it's definitely no weakling, even though this is the stealth version. It's got a lot of power. And of course, the hill climbing ability. I have to also adjust my derailleur in the back. That's just a me thing. Yeah, I wish the odometer worked. They got a, a lot of adjusting. That's the, uh, when you do a test ride, it's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed. But I mean, hey, we're moving and we're moving fast. That's what matters. Let's do some pedaling. So this is a torque-based sensor and cadence. It has both, apparently. So, and my gear is too easy in the back. Let's try to shift. Yeah, the pedaling feels pretty responsive. 
I'm going downhill right now. And it's beginning to rain, so I should get home. Let's pedal up here. Yeah, see, the motor kicks in. So, like, I'm putting in a consistent amount of effort no matter how the terrain changes. It's a pretty cool feeling, actually. I'm not used to having pedal assist. So, what did we learn from the first test ride? So, the system is a lot more complicated than the hub motor. And by the way, I wasn't using the hub motor even though it's still installed. And hopefully you guys can tell from this view that the chain isn't perfectly aligned here. So, that was making a lot of chain noise. I also have to adjust my derailleur in the back, but once I get all the chains properly aligned, I mean the power and the acceleration was there. It felt very nice. The noise level wasn't anything crazy. It definitely looks nice. The build quality, I mean this is all solid metal, and in case you're wondering, the motor is a little bit warm after just that little bit of riding. But this is just the beginning. I'm going to have a lot of future content on this motor, and I have no doubt that I'm going to be able to fix the minor adjustment problems that I have. So if you guys want to see a lot more content on this motor, including things like the top speed, going off-road, and just doing a lot more stuff with it, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. But I'm going to bring this all inside before it begins raining too hard, and I'll see you guys in the next one.